What's up guys and girls, in today's video, I'll be doing a full walkthrough of the Playground Assistant Mode in OpenAI. I believe that this is one of the best feature to be released by OpenAI, which allows you to create customizable, high quality articles and blog posts. If you're unfamiliar with what the Assistant Mode is, it's a new addition to the Playground Mode. So before we had the chat feature, which allows us to prompt your system, and create pretty high quality content that we can switch between models. But now the assistant mode allows you to do a lot more. So a couple of new things that you have in assistant mode is you have the ability to use code interpreter. So that means you can visualize data for your blog post if you like so. You also have the ability to upload images or files onto um, the assistant mode. So you can upload files of your internal links. You can upload files of your brand guides, of your business information, whatever you like to upload, you can upload it to the assistant mode and it will use that when creating content. You can switch in between models and you also have instructions. So instructions is going to be similar to your system prompt, but you are able to give a lot more instructions to the AI. This is also kind of like custom instructions. And I find that the AI follows these instructions a lot better compared to the system prompt in the chat mode. So let's talk about how you can write higher quality blog posts and articles using the assistant mode. The first thing that you wanna do is prompt the AI and prompt the system in order to get better outputs. The first thing that I did was I prompted the AI to tell it that you are an expert blog post writer. You write SEO optimized blog posts for an AI based website. You can choose any website of your likings. You can change this to whatever website you're writing for. You write in a simple to read informative and friendly tone. You follow all of the best SEO on page practices and keyword optimization for the target keyword in which I will provide to you. Now, what I'm also going to do is I'm also going to feed some more information from my SEO prompts document. I'll leave a link for this document in the description below. But essentially, this is going to give the AI just more information for it to work with when writing, which allows us to get much better outputs because the more inputs you give the AI, the more training you give it, the better your outputs will be. By giving more information into the AI and giving more instructions, you're able to guide the AI much better. So I've given it much more instructions that it needs to follow in order to write SEO optimized content. Now, what we can do is we can upload a file with our internal links. You can upload a file that has information about your brand or your business, or you can upload a file which has information that you want to include within your article. The possibilities really are endless. You can pretty much upload anything that you like, but this is really awesome because it opens up the possibilities for content in which you can create. Because let's say you want to create content that is not um, trained on ChatGPT or content that's specific for your business, you can simply upload a file with that business information and tell the AI to use that when writing the content. For instance, let's say I wanted to copy over all of my internal links. I can use a tool like sitemap to clipboard. I think this is a Chrome extension which copies all of the um, URLs on your, um, on your sitemap. And then I can paste that into a document and upload that onto the assistant mode. So once you have your internal links or whatever document you wanna upload, just click on the upload feature and we're going to upload that file. So now that file is uploaded and it will be used within your content. The first prompt that I've used to generate the blog post outline was that I told the AI that your target keyword in which we're trying to rank for is how to start an AI SaaS company in 2023. Your first task is to write an in-depth comprehensive blog post outline for this article and I've told it to write in Markdown. I always like to generate an outline first before generating the full article because I feel as though the AI will have a lot more context and you're usually able to get much better outputs. Okay, so this is the outline in which we got back how to start a AI SaaS company in 2023. Emphasis on the significance of AI SaaS, understanding AI SaaS, pre-planning phase, technical foundation, business logistics, funding, team building, go-to-market go to market strategy, marketing your SaaS, scaling, and a conclusion. So this, I would say, is a pretty good outline. So now let's go ahead and tell it to generate the full article. Now to write the full article, I'm going to give it a pretty simple prompt. I've told it to write the full article following the best SEO practices, include lists, tables, charts, case studies, bolded words, write as much relevant and useful information as possible, include internal links and write in Markdown. Okay, and this is the full article that we got back, how to start an AI SaaS in 2023. Starting an AI SaaS company is like planting your flag in the digital moon. It's ambitious, futuristic, and ripe with opportunity. But where do you begin? Pretty good. AI SaaS, pre-planning phase, and they have the three steps of pre-planning, technical foundation, um, business model strategies for AI SaaS. And I think this is a nice chart here. Legal considerations, go to market, case study case study is kind of short i would like a little bit longer of a case study and a conclusion overall i think this article is pretty good but just from taking a look at it i think it's going to be pretty short in terms of um word length so let's see quickly how much words this is 
Yeah, it's less than a thousand words, so that's not ideal. A couple of ways in which you can overcome this is you can ask it to generate each section by section. This usually allows you to get a much longer article, or we can simply tell it to expand this article. And I also noticed that it did not include our internal links. That is sometimes the issue with the GPT. It doesn't always listen to our instructions. But what you can do is you can probably experiment with uploading your file, or you can just paste in your links within the instructions because I find that the instructions work a little bit better. Okay, so I told it to expand the article and it seems as though the article is a little bit more expanded. And it's also went ahead and included those um, internal links. So that is a good sign. So what I did was I entered the internal links within the instructions. So that might work a lot better. So this article is still a little bit less than a thousand words, not as long as I would like it to be. But it is nice that we have some internal links that were included and also some external links as well. So that is a good sign. Um, if you wanted to include those links, you have to most likely um, upload that into the instructions tab rather than using the upload feature. But overall, that's how you can use the playground mode and specifically the assistant mode to write high quality SEO optimized articles. Now, a couple things to note before we end today's video is that you can also save this and then use this for all of your articles. So let's say you have a couple of different websites. This can be one specific website for your AI um, niche. Then you can create another um, playground assistant for another niche that you have. So it allows you to save a lot of time because you can already save these um, pre-built uh, templates that you have and then just write the content with it. When you use Code Interpreter, it will give you ideas in which you can use to generate a graph or an image, but it actually wouldn't generate that image for you. If you wanted to actually generate that um, image using Code Interpreter, then your best bet would be to use GPTs. You can create a, you can turn that assistant into a GPT, and then you can use the Code Interpreter to allow you to be able to then generate that actual image because this is going to give you the steps or the code that you need to um, generate that image, and then you would have to upload that onto your own website. But again, this is still a really, really good way for you to create high quality articles. And you can also save these preset settings so you can use it for multiple niches. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video and I hope that you learned something new. If you did, let it be known by giving us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, stay well.